Hey, welcome back to the following of our previous video, obviously. And we are going to build this, we're going to start building our logic for our menu. So, first thing we need to do is to say in our level. So, I reopened our level and I opened our, so I opened our, the level we just created, out game level. And we need to, to we created a game mode, we need to set this level as a game mode. So in settings, world settings, we're going to tell game mode override. We have one, we're going to override that game mode with the out game game mode. We're going to open that out game game mode. And in the, def the class default, we're going to say we don't want any default bond class. We don't want, we're going to let that free and we want our out game P controller our, as player controller class. So if compile and save. So you need, like me, you need two player controller, one for your game and one for your out game. So we just set our game mode. So if I hit play, nothing's going to happen and we're going to be fine. So if I hit escape, that's it. I'm going to reduce the size of our windows because I have only one screen. But at least I'm going to remove that setting that say always center windows, play. So, okay, we got nothing like planned. So first we want a menu, so in our in our p controller on even graph no first first we want we want <coughs> the player controller to say to the game instance that he connected to the game that's the first thing we want so when a player controller comes into play he will tell the game instance hey i connected so we're going to create a custom event register player that is going to be run on server because only the server has access to the game instance. And in event begin play, we're going to say, hey, switch as authority and trigger that register. So when a controller comes into play, is going to tell the game instance that is connecting. So register player get game instance well actually we need to we're going to store the game instance into a variable so not like that we we're going to get the game instance we're going to cast to our type of game instance and we're going to promote that variable remove the previous variable we created going to call that uh p controller game instance well actually out game controller sorry game instance so that's not that we're going we need to to save we're going to save the game instance right off the bath right right when we start we're going to store the game instance into a variable so we're going to create a custom event that says Hey, we want to get mm, get game instance. Well, but not like that because the title might overlap with some other features. Features. So server get game instance. So that is going to be run on server also. Up, we want the game instance, and we're going to say get game instance. Then register when we register we're going to get the game instance and we need and here i'm going to basically say hey game instance store the fact that the player is connected so we need to open the game instance system game instance and we want a new variable called uh for an hour for for now we're just going to store the number of players I, I I pretty much prefer to store a number of player in an int 
pretty much because if I store if I store an array of player controller, I will store an array of out game pl player controller, uh, and I won't be able to use it in my game level since in my game level I'm using my player controller, uh, another excuse me another player controller than this one. So when we connect when we connect to the game, we're going to say number of players increase get number of players that increase when a player spawns so just to check that that's working we are going to build we're going to put a simple command that says that says <coughs> server Test. I'm just going to call that for now. It's going to be run on server. Server tests. So this is going to ask the game instance what is the number of players. Just to make sure that works. So I'm going to hit play. Up. Oh, I have two players. So the server. It's uh, where, where M, I believe, server 0, server O. Well, that's a bug. Oh, well, yes, that's for. I know why. So I told you we were getting the game instance, but actually we didn't set it so in our project. So there's one type of game instance in the your world project. That's why uh, I put it in my. I wanted to put it in my root because that because. That's the pretty much the basics of your of your game. That's the, the the only one thing that remains from the start to the beginning of the execution of your of your game. So in my project settings, in map and mods, I'm going to specify a type of game instance class. So we want the top down game instance. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to save. I'm going to play, and that should work. So if you, if I focus my server window and I play, it says two player in the level. And I suppose the client should work too. Yep, because I run because I run the, the I run that event on server. Else it, it wouldn't work. Since the game instance only exists on the server, the client won't, won't be able wouldn't be able to connect to it to to get the to get that reference. So that works. Players are coming into. Players are coming. I'm going to put that just. So begin play. Store references. Register player. Register player. And after that, we will we will create the add for our player. Sorry, so new custom events. Creates. Out game add, out game menu. I'm just going to call that. It's going to be run on clients because simply because add can't exist on server. So, well, create widget, out game menu. The only player is this one. We're doing. We're going to store that in a variable. So promote to variable. That variable out game controller menu. So that's it. What are we going to say? Well, we need to add that to player screen, obviously. And we're going to build the menu right now. So if I click on the little, I don't know how to say that in English, but the little thing, the little icon, you can jump right into your hierarchy where, where, you, where your asset is. So that's our menu. First thing, we want to try that out. So let's put a button. Let's put some text. A. So if I hit play, I'm going to see A. Oh, no, because I didn't run the event actually. Create 
add oh, create a game menu create a game menu that's it we might need to add a delay before that to avoid any problems yep like that like you can see on the client one it doesn't have add because we need to add a small delay before the even begin play because the player controller of the client sometimes have some lags and we need to make sure it does everything when it connects we don't want any problems so we're going to say one and one second it's going to be enough I believe up oh, that's it we're going to enable the mouse button else we aren't going to be able to do anything so in our class defaults we want to show mouse cursor we want to enable click events we want to enable mouse over events we don't care about touch events but well maybe you do but I don't that's for obviously pads default mouse cursor well that's my setup after we don't we did, don't really care about that so up oh, I have a I have a mouse cursor setup but we don't really care about that so I can hit a I see a that's pretty much fantastic and we're going to build we are going to build our menu now so we need a vertical box of any size you want I don't we don't really care I'm going to put that well actually on the left of my screen I'm going to say it's that big I'm going to say it's a little bit off my the, the edge and I'm going to say it's okay so drop the A I'm going to say fill I'm going to copy paste that uh, I won't worry about styling there I should be but because redoing that will be hard but for the purposes of the tutorial I'm going to do that fast I believe so we want several buttons we want a quit button we want a solo button we want a host multiplayer button we want a join lobby join multiplayer actually join uh, bros bros online games it's gonna be like that because we are badasses and we want maybe an options button but I'm just I won't cover that in this tutorial in this tutorial so if I hit play up I have several buttons that's that's crazy I can play solo I can host a multiplayer game that's going to be there's going to be a lobby window other player will be able to browse online games another window with an array of server I can click a server I'm going to join the lobby's window uh, I think I don't need anything else in the in the game so we're going to create uh, the first reference needed for that ad and I'm going to wrap up that video so well basically what we need is to say hey when I when I spawn get the client controller that's always client zero client O cast to top down controller no nope, that's my in game controller I want to cast to out game controller that's what I want I'm going to promote that promote that to a variable because that's what I, because we want to create a, a reference to our owner basically um, so I'm going to call that my owner basically because the the menu is going to listen to buttons and tell the owner to do th stuff based on what buttons we pushed so that's it so we created our menu it, spa it spawns we can click on things they will be able to do things since we cre created our re our reference we have a game instance that keep track of how many players are there I believe we are fine so that's it for this video this video hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you guys in the next one bye bye